What's up guys? Recently I made a video talking about what a defensive teardown might look like on the Seattle Seahawks. Basically, what would happen if the Seahawks just decided, you know what, this defense isn't working, the money doesn't matter, the investment doesn't matter, just rip it all up, take the pain for a year, maybe two, and then start anew around different players. And I did say in that video that that argument worked much better for the defense than the offense. And there were a few reasons why. In that video, the reason that I said was the offense isn't that bad. Uh, the offense, as of right now, is average to slightly below average when it comes to scoring points. And there would be a significant drop-off in the offense if you decided to go this route. Because you'd be getting rid of some of your best players on offense and your most important players on offense. It would go from where it is to one of the worst offenses in the league. And I know, I'm going to say this again, I know some people think we already have one of the worst offenses in the league. We we don't. Um, statistically speaking, this offense is slightly below average. And the other element at play here is, unlike the defense, the offense has actually been ravaged by injuries to the point where they kind of have an excuse for this season not going all that well. Their offensive line has been completely torn apart by injuries. The defense doesn't really have that big of an of, of a effect from any injury. Like, Nwosu's injury was significant, but losing one player cannot be the catalyst for your whole defense just completely falling apart. So, I, I don't put those two things on the same level. This, this offense has had injuries to pretty much every player on their offensive line. Some players have had to play through injuries. In fact, as of right now, I think pretty much everybody's playing through a non-trivial injury. Um, and that even includes a guy like Evan Brown, who I'm not a fan of, and I don't think he's playing good. I don't want him back next year. But um, ultimately, I, I do acknowledge the fact that this offensive line has been completely derailed by injuries, and yet the offense isn't that bad. We've even had injuries to our quarterback. Our quarterback has missed about a game and a half worth of snaps, and I think we're 18th in points scored. So there's something to lose here, and I really want to emphasize that. This isn't just something where you go, ah, get rid of everybody, who cares, doesn't matter, we have nothing to lose, like with the defense, because the defense is that bad. This offense has a long way to go before they're at the bottom of the league. With that being said, I want to at least explore things, because I know some people would be interested in this stuff. So I did the same thing with the offense that I did with the defense. What would a complete teardown of the offense down to the really young players look like? So looking at the offense, there are really only four guys. Pretty much everyone else is young or not going to be under contract in 2024 anyway. So these are really the only four guys. Now, the good news is they are four pretty substantial guys the bad news is there are not necessarily huge savings here, and in a couple, one or two cases, there are no savings at all, effectively. So, Geno Smith, let's start with him, $31.2 million cap hit next year. The dead cap, if you release him, is about half that, a little more than half that, so the savings would be 13.8. So, just shy of $14 million if you let Geno go. Again, you can cut that number in half with the dead cap hit post June 1st. 8.7 gets your savings up to 22.5, 22.5. Now, again, I really don't want to eat a dead cap hit that bleeds over into 2025 if I'm doing this. I'm trying to just get it over with if this is the path we're taking. Just take the pain on now and refresh in 2025. So I am leaning this way if I'm leaning anyway. Although, again, I've said it before, I'll say it again. I'm perfectly fine with keeping Geno Smith next year. But um, that is the financial breakdown of what it would look like to move off of him. Tyler Lockett's the next one. This is uh, one that's starting to gain some steam in the fan base. A lot of Seahawks fans wondering if maybe the 27, almost $27 million he would be due next year would be better spent elsewhere. $26.8 million in cap hit. That's a lot of money for a receiver with some real limitations. The dead cap hit, if you release him, however, would be just shy of $20 million. So the savings, they're still non-trivial, seven million, just over seven million, but that is a lot of dead cap to eat for a player who won't be on your team. 
Now, you do it post June 1st, you can get the dead cap hit down to 9.9, .9, and you're saving almost 17 million. That's very different. But again, you're kicking a lot of dead cap to 2025. So, my belief is that this is not worth it. I would keep lock it. Um, you, you do have to keep some veterans. There is a salary cap floor. It's not like you can get down to nothing but rookie contracts and UDFAs. The league would literally step in and make you spend more money. So, keeping at least a couple more expensive veterans around is totally fine. But, um, yeah, that's what it would look like to move off of Lockett. It's just not, to in, in my estimation, this is not the best way to spend our uh, money this offseason, um, giving $20 million in dead to Lockett. If we were to do it, I would probably prefer that. I don't want to put $10 million dead onto the 2025 books. But either way, it's a substantial a substantial dead cap hit to take. Next up is DK Metcalf. This is the one that people keep talking about, and it's the one that I don't understand on any level. People keep talking about trading DK Metcalf, and I always say, first of all, do you guys understand how good DK is? Do you understand how poorly we utilize him most of the time? Do you understand what he would do if he went to Kansas City? Like, if we traded DK Metcalf to Kansas City this offseason, do you guys have any idea... How, how many hours you're going to spend crying over the next 15 years about how good a player we had that we let go get 1,500 yards every season and win three Super Bowls with Mahomes. But um, the money isn't even really something we desire, right? Like the debt, the cap hit for Metcalf this year is $24.5 million, or next year, $24.5 million. The dead cap hit, if you trade him or well, release him. You wouldn't re release Metcalf, obviously. You would trade him, but it doesn't matter. Is $23 million. So the savings are $1.5 million. So you're basically paying him the same amount whether or not he's on the team. So, yeah, that that's um, not smart business. Now, if you do a post-June 1st cap hit, uh, post-June 1st release, or trade rather, excuse me, you get that down to half, $11.5 million, and you save $13 million. That's a little bit better but you're just putting another 11 and a half million dead on the books in 2025. And I think even the people who aren't huge fans of Metcalf right now would agree that $13 million in the NFL salary cap right now is not worth losing DK Metcalf because he is that good. Even the people who don't like him, I think know he's at least that good. DK Metcalf's definitely worth 13 million a year. Maybe he's not worth the 24 and a half, but we can't do anything about that. He's definitely worth the $13 million. I personally think he is worth the $24.5, but there's no doubt he's worth the 13 And the final guy is Will Disley, and honestly, I think Disley needs to go either way, even if we don't decide to rip things down. Then, uh, I would still let Disley go. It's He's not doing enough. He doesn't play enough. And at this point, I don't know what he has left. Like, he's a very injury-prone player. He doesn't really play that many snaps anymore. I don't know what we're getting out of Will Disley that's worth $10 million in cap in 2024. So the dead cap would be 3.1, so $7 million in savings. And there's no post-June 1st stuff with Disley. He either gets released or he doesn't. And there's no trade, I don't think, with Disley either. I can't imagine anybody trading for Disley. So these four players combined have a cap hit of about $92.6 million. And if you decided to release them all or trade them or whatever, you know, you, you get rid of them, your dead cap would be $63.2 million for that one season. So, again, that's not really something that Carroll would probably do. There would be some savings, mostly from Geno, but put it all together, it's about $29.3 million. Now, if you decided to go the post-June 1st route, you could push a lot of that dead cap, in fact, almost all of, half of it, to 2025 and save about $60 million. but I don't really know if that fits into your plans either. Are you really going to rebuild for two seasons? Are you going to say, come back in 2026, we'll be good then? Like, I don't, uh, Carol isn't willing to throw away a game. Why would he be willing to throw away two seasons? And realistically, I don't think very many coaches are willing to throw away two seasons ahead of time. Like, that, that's some trust-the-process 76er stuff that I don't think a vast majority of coaches or organizations are willing to do. So I'm not even asking for that. And, by the way, I'm not asking for any of this, except for Disley. I don't want to release Geno or Lockett. I don't want to trade Metcalf. This offense, 
I believe, would have been at least top 10 this year with a moderately healthy offensive line. That is the one part of this team that I think has a valid excuse for the way they're playing this year. Uh, I don't know if that excuses the play calling or the schemes or the designs of the plays. I don't know if that excuses some of the stuff we've seen from uh, the, the tight end usage. But if the offensive line was moderately healthy, I think a lot of those things would be diminished or gone entirely. I got no problem admitting that. So I would prefer to keep it steady. Let Disley go because he's not going to be worth that money. And $7 million is actually a lot when it's only 3.1 dead. But I would keep these guys together. But I just wanted to present this information to those who maybe view things a little bit differently. Who maybe are ready to rip it down. And like I said in my defensive video, you can acknowledge the player is good and still say, who cares, this isn't working, let's just rip it down and start over. So, if it were up to me, if it were up to me, I would strip the defense down pretty much naked and just accept that the defense is probably going to be crap next year, like it's crap now anyway, and focus on the offense. Build around the offensive unit you have and understand that if you have a top five offense, which is totally possible, and a really bad defense, that's actually a formula to win a lot of games and have success. We see teams with elite offenses and garbage defenses actually have Good seasons, great seasons. Like, remember that Green Bay team that went 15-1? and I think they had the worst defense in the league that year by points allowed, and they still went 15-1 and because they had the number one offense. And you see examples like this relatively frequently, I feel like. So, you get the offense up to standard, one way or the other, and the defense being stripped down might not even force you to do a hard rebuild for a season. But that's me. See you guys later, go Hawks.